Hi, this is Steve Sokol from Open Flight Solutions, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to access the Flightbox web user interface from the web browser on an iOS device. To start out with, let's make sure that we're actually connected up to the Flightbox. We have a, another video which shows you how to actually go through the connection process, but at the moment, we just want to make sure that we're connected properly. So, ah, we're not. We're going to go to Wi-Fi, and we'll select our Flightbox. There we go, we're connected. For a little bit more detail again, see the other video on connecting an iOS device to um, a flight box. Now that we're connected, we're going to need to launch our Safari web browser. So tap the Safari icon, and then up in the top, we're going to enter the IP address for the flight box. It's the same on every flight box. Put your cursor up here in the top and type in 192.168.1.1. And then hit the Go button. And within a few seconds, you'll see this load up. Now, on the left hand side, you'll see the menu. Uh, and on the right hand side, you'll see the actual content display for this particular uh, screen that we're looking at. The content display will change depending on which menu item you've actually got selected. Now, if your device is uh, an iPhone and you've got it in, in portrait mode rather than in landscape mode, uh, the menu will actually be hidden, and you'll have to tap that little three-line icon up in the upper left-hand corner to get it to display. And then you'll select the item, and it will, again, hide, uh, showing you as much of the content display as it can. Um, a few items here. At the top, you'll see, of course, this is a flight box, AHARS Beta. Um, below that, it actually shows the version number. We happen to be running uh, AHARS 0.5.1 beta version. Uh, and then that uh, number that's in parents next to that, that's actually the build ID. Um, and in some cases, for debugging and diagnostic purposes, we may need to, to get the build ID from you. So if we ever ask for it, that's where it is. Below that, you see the status indicator showing is connected. That just means that there's actually a live connection between the flight box and this particular iOS device. Um, below that, the number of recent clients is 2, and that's simply the number of devices which have connected to this particular flight box since it booted up. Below that, SDR devices. Now that's an important one if you're doing debugging. That's actually the number of radio modules that's installed, software-defined radios. And in this case, you see two. Now, if you ever have a dual-band system, but you only see one there, we're probably having a problem with either the USB bus or with the radio module itself. So that's a, a good diagnostic tip. Below that, it's showing the current number of messages uh, that we've received. Um, UAT, of course, is our, our uh, 978 MHz UAT band, and in this case, I have a, a UAT transmitter running in the room with me, so I'm actually able to show a little bit of data there. And it's showing a current uh, value of 80, 81, 82 messages per minute, and a peak of 93. Uh, below that, 1090ES, we're receiving about 225, 27 messages per minute, um, and then 240 is the peak that we've received, or 239. Below that, uh, UAT statistics. Now that's all the FISB data, the weather data, TFRs, etc., that come up from the towers. Now if you ever think, huh, I don't think I'm getting NEXRED radar, I don't think I'm getting METARs, you can come in here and take a look, and it'll indicate, you see the number of towers, METARs, TAFs, etc. So that's showing you all of the information uh, about what's received. So you can use this to kind of validate what you're seeing on the screen in your, uh, your EFB application. Below that is GPS information. This shows that this particular system is using a serial port connected uh, U-Blox um, GPS. That's the GPS that's built into our AHARS board. The solution right now is uh, GPS plus uh, WAS, and that's down to 2.2 meters, so about 7 or 8 feet uh, accuracy, so not too bad at all. And below that, this is the, uh, the number of satellites. We currently have 20 tracked, 14 seen, and 10 are actually making up the current fix or solution we've got. Uh, the system's been up for just shy of five minutes. That's days slash hours, minutes, and seconds in the uptime field there. The temperature shows what the temp is, and I have the fan turned off on this one so that it's a little quieter while I'm doing this video. So you see it's creeping up into the, uh, the 130 range. Normally you'll see it 125 or thereabouts. Um, and then the amount of free storage that's available on your system. Um, and that's simply, again, a diagnostic function. So over here on the left, again, we have our menu, and we can pick from a number of items. Let's take a quick look at weather. Now, because we're not connected up to any UAT towers, because we're on the ground, we're not actually going to be getting any weather information right now. 
But if you're ever curious as to see what weather information you're getting, you can come to this uh, page and then tap on the recent reports, opening that up, uh, and that will start to scroll the most recent weather data that's coming through. Now it'll still be in encoded format, so it's a little bit difficult to read, you know, um, but it'll give you some idea of what you're receiving. Now the watching field that's above that up here, uh, if you've actually added some um, METAR stations or something into a, a settings value, we'll see a little bit below on the settings tab, then uh, you'll actually see information displayed there. Now let's take a look at traffic. This lets you see what traffic the system is currently picking up. Uh, there's two separate sections here. One is showing uh, ADSB and what's called TISB traffic. And that's all the information that we're receiving either directly from aircraft or being rebroadcast by the FAA ground towers for which there's actually a location, meaning it can, it can be plotted on your moving map. Um, the section below that, basic mode S and note position messages, uh, are for aircraft that are transmitting data using an old uh, MODES transponder, but for which we don't actually have any position information because MODES, the original MODES, didn't send position. So we can't plot them, but it's showing us that, yes, we're receiving data from them. Now again, this is a, a rainy day on the ground in my office, so we're not seeing a whole lot of traffic here. But when you're actually up in the air with a, uh, know, a bunch of aircraft nearby, this will be filled and it will be updating constantly. The next tab down here is the GPS slash AHARS tab. So let's go here and you'll see it shows a, uh, a very limited map showing where it thinks it's got a lock and the location. Um, if you don't have a lock, it'll be showing 00, zero which is somewhere off the coast of Africa. Uh, this indicates that yes, it's locked in on my office in Liberty, Missouri. Now if you don't have GPS, this will stay forever at uh, Africa. And if you haven't upgraded to the AHARS system, you won't see the AHARS display that's on the right. You'll see a paper airplane that doesn't move at all because that was, uh, that was the original sort of old AHARS that was put in. So we're not using that, so no need to worry about it. If you do have the AHARS module installed, you'll see what you see here, which is an indication of pitch and roll as handled by our AHARS sensors. So let's see it moving around now. Uh, below the actual AHARS indication, you'll actually see a number of fields. There's one that shows uh, ready, which means that the AHARS solution is valid. GPS means it's getting GPS, and it needs GPS in order to, uh, to display everything properly. Uh, attitude and altitude are enabled, and logging is disabled. Flightbox is a read-only system. We don't enable logging on these. That's there for diagnostic purposes only. Now, if you ever wind up with your AHARS being somewhat off, you can actually hit that uh, reset slash level button and it will recalibrate it. Now, of course, you'll need to be in straight and level flight when you do that, otherwise it'll recalibrate wrong. Uh, the other information there is basic diagnostic information showing what the sensors are sending in at the moment. Um, you'll see, among other things, the pressure altitude, which is about 780 here. If you're corrected where I am, it would actually be 950. Um, and most good EFB applications are actually able to take that pressure altitude value and correct it using the current Q&H or Colesman value to, uh, to current um, uh, MSL value. So below that you actually see a couple of other things. We see the list of satellites that we're picking up for our GPS receiver. And then on the right hand side you'll see the G meter, which is uh, just showing what the gravitational forces are. I'll shake this box around a little bit and you'll see it jump a bit. Uh, this will actually show you real G's that you're pulling when you're actually in flight. And you can reset that if you want to, uh, to clear out the information because it shows min and max, basically. So that's the GPS. Uh, towers would show you what ADSB towers were connected to. Those are the, the ground towers that are sending up, again, all that uh, UAT FISB information, weather, etc. Uh, at this point, we're not showing any towers because we're on the ground and nowhere near an airport. Uh, logs is something that we don't use. Uh, actually, we use it here at the office, but you wouldn't use this in the field. This is for, uh, for showing some of the logging information that comes out of the system. Now, down at the bottom is an important one, and that's settings. So let's go through that. This, because it's got the, uh, the AHARS version of the firmware installed, and because the AHARS hardware is actually installed, we have uh, a bunch of options that are turned on. Now, the, the switches here, you see there's a 978 MHz radio module, which is in there, so we've got that enabled. A 1090 MHz radio module, which is also enabled. Uh, ping ADSB is a new option for some people who use um, an alternate to radio modules called a ping a ADSB receiver. We don't have one of those installed in this. Uh, we have the GPS 
um, option enabled because we have a GPS on this. And we also have the uh, attitude sensor and the altitude sensor enabled. Again, those are parts of our AHARS module. Now over on the right hand side to the right of that you'll see diagnostics where uh, show traffic source and call sign, verbose message log, etc, etc. All of those things you must leave off unless you're asked to turn them on. If, uh, if you turn them on for debugging purposes that's great, but if you leave them on for too long you can fill up the, uh, the tiny partition that we actually have built into your SD card and also built into memory for storing information and it will cause problems. So if you're, if you're running into problems, make sure those diagnostic switches are, are off and stay off. Um, below the diagnostics option, you see an AHARS uh, option there and that says set uh, AHARS sensor orientation. And we have another video that shows you how to do that. But that's basically where you'd go to set where it, what is forward and what is up for your AHARS uh, or for the AHARS sensor on your flight box, depending on how you have it mounted. Um, below that on the left you'll see configuration. If you want to have the system filter out your ADSB out indication, if your aircraft happens to have ADSB out on it, uh, you can put your mode S hex code into that value. Now you can actually find that by going to the FAA's website, doing an N number lookup, and then in all the data that comes back from your N number, you can plug, you'll find the, uh, the hex uh, ICAO code and plug that in there. Uh, you'll simply uh, back over those characters that you see and we'll do this. So I'll put this in here and then you put in, you know, in this case, mine I believe is AC19, whoops, Charlie Alpha. So there we go. And once you've done that, just move to someplace else and uh, that will all get saved automatically. Now watch list actually allows you to add a space delimited list. It's a list of um, different METAR codes or, or METAR stations that you want uh, listed in that weather traffic list, or uh, pardon me, weather list. So you go in here and put in, um, for me, GPH. Uh, probably need to do it. And MCI, which is the Kansas City International. Um, you can put in several uh, items that you really want to keep an eye on. Again, this is mostly for debugging purposes, but it's there. PPM correction we do not use in Flightbox, so please ignore that. And the bottom is serial output baud rate. If you happen to have our serial uh, interface adapter, that will appear. If you don't have the serial interface adapter, that probably will not appear. And that allows you to set the, uh, the baud rate for any serial data that's being sent. Uh, a few other options over here on the uh, right-hand side are commands. Um, reboot and shutdown are pretty self-explanatory. You know, reboot the system or shut it down. The one above that that says click to select a system update file is what you'll use to do a, uh, a manual update, um, which is something that's important. It's something that you do not do from a tablet. Uh, we'll have another video on how to do a system update. That's something you'll usually do from a, uh, a computer rather than a, a tablet or a smartphone. So that's the basics. That is our system um, web UI. It's built into every flight box and uh, it's got a lot of useful information for making sure that everything is, is up and running and happy. So thanks again and I appreciate you watching the video.